Lowell Observatory's Discovery Channel Telescope hides in the Coconino National Forest just outside of Happy Jack, Arizona. This is a 4.3 meter telescope. That's the diameter of the primary mirror, which you can see behind me here, about 14 feet in diameter. After five years of use, the three-ton piece of glass that makes up the primary mirror is due for a new coat of aluminum, a routine procedure that needs to be completed about every five years to maintain the telescope's quality. The primary mirror has been installed in the telescope since uh, the middle of 2011, and over time the coating, the aluminum coating on that mirror degrades to the point that eventually uh, it b begins to interfere with the image quality from the telescope. The process we're doing now is the disassembly work required to remove that mirror from the telescope so that we can take it over to our auxiliary building, strip the old coating, and recoat the mirror so that we get back to that new, highly reflective coating that we had before. Three, two, one. After days of removing hundreds of zip ties, wires, and bolts, the M1 cell containing the mirror can be removed. We go. The M1 cell holds the primary mirror and directs the mirror when the telescope is in use. It is slowly lowered down through a hole in its enclosure in the telescope dome. We are currently bolting the lens cell to its fixture, its transport fixture. Not only does it transport, but it actually allows us to move it to a 90 degree angle so we move it horizontally into the next building. We are removing the shackles from it and I'm going to start lowering it down to the crane. Touchdown. On the car. Hey! Woo! Then I'll roll along these tracks into the, uh, the next building. <laughs> How's it going so far? Pretty good. Um, I think really the thing I was most nervous about was getting the cell with the mirror on it on the ground, uh, which is what we did today. So I'll sleep better tonight. Tomorrow we're planning on actually pulling the primary mirror out of its cell and put the mirror back down onto the wash stand where we can start uh, preparations to strip the aluminum coating and start our cleaning process. Clean room suits are required to keep any dust or stray particles from falling on the mirror at the last second. We're about to do one final rinse of the top surface of the, of the mirror and then it will go in the coating chamber and uh, we'll get it coated later today. Swiffers are used to reach every inch of glass and then the mirror is blown dry. I feel like we got a really really clean surface. Our procedures worked out uh, better than expected, so I'm really excited to get a good coating. The prepared mirror is lifted up by crane and the wash stand replaced with the vacuum chamber floor where the mirror will sit during re-illuminization. Then the chamber floor, mirror and all, is wheeled back into place. How do you feel about having the mirror in there successfully? Super relieved. It's like, it's in a safe place now. It's fantastic, but, it's already below. but our job is so only halfway done. Around. The vacuum chamber is closed and the vacuum pumps are turned on. The system must be at hard vacuum, or one microtor, before coating can proceed. Once the chamber is ready, aluminum coated filaments will be electrically heated, vaporizing the aluminum. The aluminum molecules rain down on the surface of the glass, creating a coating merely 1,000 angstroms thick, or about how much human hair grows in 25 seconds. Eight hours later, the recoating is completed. Two days later, after allowing the chamber to slowly vent to atmospheric pressure, the crew pulls out the finished project to inspect their work. We're about to pull the, the mirror out of the chamber uh, for the first time right now and uh, put it on the wash stand for inspection. In about six years, this process of re-illuminization will need to be repeated. All right, we're down. Looks good. But for now, the mirror is as clean as it ever will be. Right.